Well, I'm very pleased to be here um, and to uh, be able to join in a conversation uh, to which I'm a new entrant, uh, though I think I uh, certainly have a sense of the uh, impulses both within and outside the bank that uh, might uh, make this a, an important uh, subject at any time, but perhaps especially um, at this one. Uh, so I'm grateful also to the organizers, to Biju and to Patrick. Uh, indeed, this uh, paper might be seen as part of a, a longish conversation now, perhaps approaching uh, a decade, which is uh, a few years before the publication of the book by edited by Biju and Michael, uh, which began a, a, a phase in my own more, um, until then, more um, ad hoc engagement with questions of modernization, development, um, anthropology, culture, etc. Uh, and there are many strands uh, in this story, some of which would go back to early years and uh, links with uh, Anis and with other people around this table. But in the last 10 years, uh, the conversation has become more focused for me and both uh, more productive and more difficult and has uh, convinced me of something uh, that I tried to lay the basis for in that paper, The Capacity to Aspire, that Biju kindly mentioned, which is to say that my own field, anthropology broadly conceived, uh, has some very important work to do other than either to be critical of uh, other disciplines like economics or, um, uh, and in addition to moving beyond that and doing something itself, that it therefore uh, also required some shift of its own objects and uh, methods. Uh, so that it could be a more robust partner in these kinds of engagements. So indeed it is true that it's through those conversations and then subsequent ones in the years since uh, that book came out, uh, especially with uh, Biju himself, but also with others, including Michael and other friends who share uh, uh, some of these interests, that the present uh, uh, invitation uh, came to me from Biju uh, and one which I had some trepidation about because deliberation and democratic theory is not uh, by any means uh, my strength, but I did think it was a very good occasion to uh, engage with that discussion. So that's by way of background and to say that I look forward very much to the discussion of the other papers and of the general, to the general conversation. I had a quick look at the other papers but not enough time to read them closely, so I look forward to uh, what I can gain from them uh, also. Uh, so I'm going to use my uh, remaining 15 plus uh, minutes, and may I ask, because I don't have a, a good watch, if Anis or uh, someone can just let me know when I have a few minutes left, uh, that'd be great. Um, so uh, I don't know that uh, all but a few of you have had a chance to read this paper, so there's the usual dilemma of whether to uh, mystify those who haven't or <laughs> bore those who have, but uh, <laughs> I Celestine. Uh, um, so I, I'll try and go through the paper and say what the journey is uh, and, and just highlight the, the main points. Uh, and I think they are not very um, uh, obscure, so it, it'd be easy to do. Uh, and the, the takeoff point is that my reading of the work that does exist on deliberation, especially as related to poverty and to uh, the uh, uh, parts of the world that, that suffer most grievously from poverty, is that the news is not that good. Um, and that's I get this from the very good work of people like Biju, Mike Wolcock, and others who, who've been much closer to the ground on this uh, than I, and more conscious of this as an issue, and though they, I think their work shows that there is certainly very important material to, to look at, and to look at more, um, it's difficult to take much good cheer from that material, and the reason for that is straightforward, 
uh, on the one hand, you could say deductively, deliberation in all its local forms over the last 50 or 60 years, uh, just deductively has not apparently made uh, a significant difference to either uh, the measurable state of the poorer populations of the world or uh, to the more elusive question of how much voice they have in those processes that affect uh, these outcomes. So you could even say simply deductively what has deliberation done and, and more or less deductively argue that's not done uh, much. Uh, on the other hand, you can also look at the evidence, uh, some of which is direct evidence by uh, some of the people around this table uh, and others, and some of which is indirect evidence on local level conflict resolution in different parts of the world, where, which has been quite a robust literature in anthropology, among other things. People like Paul Bohannon and others have worked for a long time um, in the tradition of British social anthropology, which is very concerned with law uh, in societies without formal Western institutions, but nevertheless where conflict resolution is occurring. So there is a kind of older literature which is quite available, uh, but unfortunately it didn't have much interest in macro uh, uh, outcomes in regard to well-being or to wealth. But uh, we certainly don't see much evidence from that older literature either that uh, the poorer populations in um, parts of the world outside the Atlantic world were getting much purchase uh, through uh, deliberative procedures. So uh, the question this poses is if the news is bad, uh, then uh, what are we trying to do in an endeavor like this? Because uh, this, the answer that uh, a variety of people to the right and left uh, of our interest would be forget deliberation. Uh, you know, deal uh, either go for some uh, less mediated form of uh, social revolution, a direct attack on ruling classes, a direct effort to delegitimate, displace, etc. Uh, or, I suppose, on the right, simply dismantle the state or just subtract various kinds of interferences. Uh, you know, structurally adjust the hell out of everybody and hope for the best, etc., uh, etc. Et Not solutions that are uh, big on uh, <coughs> deliberation. Uh, and so the question that took uh, uh, shape in my mind is, well, what can we see uh, even in what looks like a quite dismal picture of, of the voices of the poor in deliberative context? And as I uh, began to consider this, I realized that it required uh, something which I'm now uh, even thinking is worthy of being a, a tiny boutique field of its own, which we may call the anthropology of failure or the anthropology of disappointment, uh, which uh, maybe is something that people in my field should do more seriously, uh, given their, the populations they work with. But given that line of thinking, I, I thought that the first step was to, since deliberation, above all, is about language and about speech, uh, whatever else it may be about, uh, we need some approach to these linguistic um, environments. and. Coming out of the field that I do, uh, uh, anthropology with some strong tradition in the US, particularly of interest in language, and that to sociolinguistic sorts of interest, uh, I was immediately drawn to the issue of uh, context. That is, what was wrong with these contexts? If, it was, if nothing was wrong with what poor people were asking, and if furthermore, at least on the face of it, there pe seemed to be people interested in listening, why was nothing happening? So the, the logical point then is to say, well, what's the trouble with the context? And then uh, the first thing I began to think about, and this has been a preoccupation for a while that I've talked to Biju about as well, is that the, con the problem is partly the, the, the idea of context itself. And so I have a discussion here about that term, which is a kind of common sense term for all of us. It's a term on which we all rely. It's a default term where we say, well, uh, you know, what does this mean? It depends on the context. Or you have to define the problem contextually, et cetera. But the reality is the idea of context has not had much examination. So I decided to take a look at that or continue to think about that. And I have here a few uh, deliberations in the third section of the paper, which is called The Problem of Context. And I'll summarize it with, with what is still my favorite aphorism on the subject, which comes from Jonathan Culler, a literary critic writing about Derrida and Austin and so on. He says, uh, 
meaning is context bound, but context is boundless. I think more or less that's QED. That is, uh, how do we tackle the fact that every context has a context? And furthermore, if you examine that closely, it's not a, a, a high, tightly, neatly arranged Chinese box arrangement either, where you can go in a disciplined way to bigger and bigger scale of context, et cetera. It's, you can have elements that simply uh, break the queue in, in terms of context. So uh, 